Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, getting close to the fall season, and I wanted to talk about the fall feasts. And in this class, we're going to be talking about the signs related to the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, or the Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets. We're going to look at the Revelation 12 sign in the sky in relationship to other scriptures, so we can see what all of that means. What does the Feast of Rosh Hashanah mean in respect to our Father's seven-day plan? And the Bible prophecies. Now we're over here at a chart from Clarence Larkin from his book Dispensational Truth. This chart is the Feasts of the Lord, where he talks about all seven feasts and gives a summary of the scripture related to those feast days in prophetic times. And when we look over here in the seventh month and the first feast of the seventh month is the feast of the memorial of blowing of trumpets. We can see down here what he has to say about it. One thing we see is that it's related to the New Year's Day. Um, there's actually two years on the sacred calendar. There is the harvest year and then there is the civil year. One begins in the fall and the other begins in the spring. That's why a lot of time you hear people celebrating two separate New Year's is because it's two different kinds of year. And this particular one is talking about the harvest New Year. It starts in the fall. That's why sabbatical years and jubilee years actually start in the fall. They don't start in the spring is because jubilee years and sabbatical years are related to harvest seasons. Those are part of the harvest year. But anyway. When you go on down, you see that he starts talking about the regathering of Israel and he points to Matthew chapter 24. And this is where it gets really interesting when you start to look at those prophecies related to that vibrating echo of the trumpet that we hear about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. A lot of people associated that with the rapture or the marriage supper or the great awakening, these big, big, big um, end time prophecy events that are supposed to take place. Well, when you look at what Clarence Larkin says in summary, he says Israel is to be gathered back to their own land, referencing Jeremiah chapter 16 and chapter 30, as well as Isaiah 11 and Amos chapter 9. He says, we are told in Matthew 24 that they are to be summoned by angelic trumpeters. It will be to observe the Feast of Trumpets at Jerusalem. So this is the prophecy related to the memorial of blowing of trumpets. It is these trumpets like I referred to earlier and you all have to do another class on it when I talk about the vibrating echo of the trumpet. We learn about that in the third testament of the Bible in chapter 55. Now, that particular chapter is all about the purification of the world and humanity and the judgment. In other words, the apocalypse that we hear about is detailed in this chapter of the third testament of the Bible. And you can find a link to it in the description of the video. But I bring this up in relationship to what we hear about these trumpets, because in this scripture, this third testament is the first time that we actually start to get details of what these trumpets are that we hear about, like we said in First Thessalonians and First Corinthians and even in Matthew chapter 24, all talk about these trumpet, but it's not really clear as to what it's referring to. And some, even like myself, have been thinking that those trumpets are related to the trumpets that we hear about in Revelation chapter 8 and on. But turns out he's talking about two different things, whereas the trumpets of Revelation chapter eight will be kind of an apocalyptic event taking place around the eighth day, that period we call the end of time. Well, actually, this is a second set of trumpets that we were talking about when we're thinking about the prophecies of Rosh Hashanah and what we're reading about here in chapter 55. Let me just read this verse. It says, and that will be the hour when the sublimity of the conscious, the vibrating echo of a trumpet will be heard announcing from the beyond that the kingdom of life and peace comes to men of goodwill. So this right here is different than what we are reading about those seven trumpet blasts associated with the vials and all of that in Revelation. This is different. 
Um, this one is talking about the sublimity of the conscious. This is where that trumpet is going to be heard from. It's going to be a vibrating echo that comes from our conscious. But we're going to get into this a little bit later because it's all related to what we're talking about. Back over here at Clarence Larkin, um, you see how the prophecy related to the memorial of blowing of trumpets is this is the time when these angelic trumpeters, these angelic figures, you remember in the scripture it says that our father or the Messiah would return with ten thousands of angels, thousands upon thousands of angels. Well, it is these same angels that will be blowing these trumpet, this resonating trumpet that we'll hear from inside of us will be originating from our conscious being blown by these angels with the sole purpose of gathering the father's people back to the fold. This is the purpose of the trumpets is to gather the people back when they hear this sound. When our father's people hear this sound all around the world from the north country to the south country, the east and the west, when they hear this vibrating echo, it's going to summon them back around what the scripture refers to as New Jerusalem. Now, I know he says Jerusalem here, but you have to understand that we are expecting a new Jerusalem and a lot of the scripture that we hear about in the Bible when it's talking about the return to Jerusalem it may not necessarily be talking about that physical place over in the Middle East because it could very well be talking about this new Jerusalem that we are expecting to come down from the heavens either way it's all going to be signaled this regathering will be signaled by these blowing of the trumpets that's why we have this feast called the memorial of blowing of trumpets now, this brings me to the book of Revelation and chapter 12, because this is the signaling of those events that we heard about. Um, you remember back in 2017, when people were expecting this Revelation 12 sign in the sky, it was a really, really big deal. I mean, people all over the world. Um, myself included, were expecting something significant to happen. Um, I really didn't find out about it until like a day or two before it actually occurred back there in September of 2017. But even in that short period of time that I knew about it, my eyes were big as quarters because I was wondering what was going to happen in relationship to this sign. And I wasn't the only one. There were people with telescopes, binoculars, there's people with microscopes, there's people that's looking at the geology of the earth, expecting earthquakes and volcanoes, people are expecting rapture type events. I mean, all kinds of events were anticipated for the Revelation 12 sign of the sky on September the 23rd of 2017. But what do we actually get? Some will say nothing. Some will look back and say nothing happened. Um, it was like a big whoop where we spent all of this time analyzing um, this event even shortly after it occurred. But nobody could really point to anything significant to say, well, this thing has happened. And I believe a lot of us was trained in that moment not to actually look for physical things to happen in association with these signs, because a lot of them are spiritual things that are to take place. And this is the case here with the Revelation 12 sign in the sky. It wasn't that it was a big old never mind is that we wasn't really looking for what actually took place. What took place on September the 23rd, 2017 with this Revelation 12 sign in the sky? And for the answer, we have to come to an ancient book called Gad the Seer. Now, we hear about this book over in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12, as well as Galatians chapter 4. This book is referenced throughout the scripture. And it actually contains the information we need to unlock the riddle of the Revelation 12 sign in the sky. So we come down here to chapter 14, the last chapter of the book, and you see it start to talk about Rosh Hashanah. Like I said, this is the understanding we needed about the memorial of blowing of trumpets. And the reason why so many people are having a hard time understanding the significance of the Revelation 12 sign in the sky is because they're not aware of the scripture that I'm about to show you here that breaks it down for us. What's actually going on with the memorial of blowing of trumpets, particularly the one that occurred in 2017. 
Now, we're not going to cover this entire chapter here. There's a lot of uh, great information in these first few verses. This is actually where we start to understand what the rainbow means. We hear about this rainbow in the book of Revelation and other places. So when we hear about this rainbow, like in Revelation chapter 4 or in Revelation chapter 10, we understand that this is in relationship to the covenant. We learned that from Gad the seer. But what I want to bring out, particularly in this class, is down here in verse 7, where he's talking about these books. Now, all of these is talking about the Rosh Hashanah here. Remember, that's what the entire chapter is about. And so we, we see down here that he's talking about these books. We're understanding that these events took place on Rosh Hashanah. These are Rosh Hashanah events. Now, let me read a little bit of this. It says, And then a man dressed in linen brought before the glory of the Lord three books that contained the records of every man. Now, this man clothed in linen, we hear about him in Ezekiel and over there in the book of Daniel. This is a very important individual in the end times. We don't really hear about much that he does over in the Bible. But over here in Gad the Seer, we see one of the main things he does is he opens these books. And these books that he's talking about, we hear about in Revelation chapter 12. And we also hear about this book over here in the book of Daniel and chapter 7. These are the books of judgment. They contain all of our deeds in them. Every one of us has a paragraph in these great books that contain the deeds that we have performed in our entire lifetimes. This information has been recorded for Judgment Day, which is the time period that we're in now. And over here in the book of Gad, we see that these books were opened on Rosh Hashanah. What we need to do is make the connection that it was Rosh Hashanah of the year 2017 when we got this huge sign in the sky indicating some significant event to happen. What we need to understand is that this significant event was that these books were opened. Now, this is why everybody thinks, you know, it was an old never mind. There was nothing really to see because there wasn't. These books are spiritual books and they were open in a spiritual world. There's no material manifestation of anything for us to see. And this is why most of us missed it. Talking about the opening of these books. You see in verse 8 it says, And he read the first book and it contained the just deeds of the people. And the Lord said, These are granted eternal life. So now he's going to get into what these books are. Now, like we said, the Bible it mentions these books over in Revelation chapter 12, but it doesn't tell us what's in these books, what they're good for, you know, what would be the result of this opening of these books. We're back over here in Gad the Seer. We see that there is actually three separate books. The first book contained the just deeds of his people. These are the people who have been doing those things that our father approves of, as, as he calls them just deeds. And he says, these people are granted eternal life. So this is the first set of people, the people who had the just deeds, they were automatically granted eternal life. Now, Satan had a problem with this and said, who are these guilty people? And his justification for saying so is that humans are all sinful we all have problems and have errors and none of us can be really considered just one of the meanings for satan is slanderer and one of his main things is to go before the father and remind him of the bad things that we have done in life i mean he sits there and waits and watches for us to do something break a commandment and then the first thing he does is runs and tell our father that we are wicked people and that we are guilty of making these crimes well we could imagine his dismay when all of a sudden these people are granted eternal life he has a huge problem with that but the man dressed in linen cried to satan like a ram's horn said silence this day is holy to our lord so whereas satan has been our slanderer up until this point all of a sudden, he's silenced and nobody wants to hear his slandering anymore. The days of recording our wicked deeds are over. So he's put to shame here. 
and not allowed to speak, as he has done so freely in the past, slandering humans. But anyway, verse 10 says, And he read in the second book, and it contained the unintentional sins of the people. So, this being the second book contains the deeds of a different type of people. These people are the ones who are committing unintentional sins. Whereas the people in the first book may have understood what sin is and what is considered a sin. And so they're able to go through life avoiding these sins. This second group of people kind of reminds me of those who don't study the scripture as much as they should. And so they don't know the errors and the pitfalls of life. And so they're making mistakes. They're doing stuff that they don't know is getting them in trouble. These are what's considered unintentional sins. And the Lord said, put that book aside, but save it until the third of the month passes by to see what they will do. Now, this is a very, very important part of this discussion here because we see the book of these unintentional sins is actually set aside, whereas the ones in the first book were granted eternal life. Their fate is done. They're, they're taken care of. This second group, the book is set aside for a third of the month. And understanding that we're talking about Rosh Hashanah here, and when it says the third of the month, the way I understand this is he's talking about 10 days or 10 years. A month has 30 days in it, and a third of the month will be 10 days, but I believe he's talking about 10 years here. These are 10 years that we have been given to learn how to live within the law, to learn how to stop committing these unintentional sins. This is why many of you guys are being drawn to the feast days or drawn to this channel is because of this vibrating echo of the trumpet that's, that you're hearing from inside, from your conscious, that's leading you towards living a righteous and a just life. Whereas before we were all sinners and caught up in the ways of the world, as of 2017, our father has started these trumpets to blow and they are now regathering the people back to the fold. And this regathering, all you understand is that it's being regathered around the scripture. To define our father's people, we have to look for those who are obeying the scripture, doing what the Bible tells them to do, obeying the covenant. And what our Father, in His infinite wisdom, His grace and His mercy has done for us, is first He gave us a signal in 2017, followed by 10 years to prepare ourselves for what's coming next. And what's coming next is what we read about in Revelation chapter 6, talking about the great and terrible day of the Lord. I know I'm jumping over scripture all here, um, but when you think about Malachi, the last chapter of the Old Testament, chapter four of Malachi, tells us that he's going to send the Elijah spirit before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So it is during this period from 2017 until 2027 that we can expect to have encounters with this so-called Elijah spirit as part of this vibrating echo of the trumpet that's all leading us back. To where he wants us to be is all regathering us back around who he is and that is the word of God and that is the law now I didn't plan on including this part in the video this time but the more I think about it the more I think this is very significant so I want to go ahead and share this with you guys part of my testimony back there in 2017 with the Revelation 12 sign in the sky the really only significant change that I noticed in my life that happens back then was that this channel was actually changed into what we know it as today. It was in 2017 that Hermes Academy was actually born. Hermes Academy is based on the book called The Shepherd of Hermes and how it gives us instructions in there about teaching the elect about these certain principles that we're about to talk about now. 
If there's only one thing that we understand from the shepherd of Hermas is what Paul was talking about over here in the book of Ephesians in chapter six, when he says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. These powers are what has an effect on man and humanity is now wrestling against these powers. Well, it is over here in the Shepherd of Hermas that we learn who these powers are that humanity is wrestling against. We learn here in the last part of the book, in the third part of the book called the Shepherd of Hermas, called Similitudes, about these powers. You see them there in verse 144. These are the powers that control humanity right now. And these are the powers that we must overcome if we want to see the kingdom of heaven. Talking about stuff like perfidiciousness. And yes, you might need to go in and look up these words. But perfidiciousness, incontinence, infidelity, pleasure are four dominant evil spirits that are actually steering and controlling humanity toward their own destruction. And with these four are others like sadness or malice, lust or anger, lying, foolishness, pride and hatred. These are all wicked spirits. The Bible refers to them as powers that we have to overcome. What I believe also happened back there in 2017 with this signal for us to get away from these so-called intentional sins was to also get away from these wicked powers and turn towards the righteous powers or what's known as the virgins like we read about in verse 42. These are what must become a part of our life as we get rid of those evil powers. Talking about stuff like faith, continence, power, and patience. These are the big four and with them are simplicity, innocence, chastity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, and charity. Anybody who plans to see the kingdom of heaven must have these spirits working in their life and in the absence of the other 12. But the point of this is that this was a personal signal to me back there in 2017 that encouraged me to actually steer this channel to where we see it headed today. And I believe this may have been a signal for all of humanity, but I don't know for sure. So let's go on. So the Revelation 12 sign in the sky was the signaling of the regathering, which would take place over the course of 10 years until we get to the day of atonement. That will be the last of these 10 years. That is atonement day. That is the day, or I should say, that is the year we can expect to see these horrific things happen to devastate this earth. Those will happen on the Bible's prophetic fulfillment of Atonement Day. That's what atonement is all about. It would be kind of a holocaust where there will be a large burnt offering, except this time it's going to involve a lot of humans. That is Atonement Day, and it should occur sometime around the year 2027 or 2028, based on not only the 10 days of awe starting in 2017, but it's also what we see over in Daniel and chapter 12 when it's talking about the time, time and half a time prophecies, as well as the prophecies that we hear about in the book of Barnabas talking about the sixth day. The sixth day actually starts in the year 2028. Well, that's right here around what we're calling atonement day. But the important thing that we need to understand from this lesson is that we are given time to prepare us for atonement day. These angels that are sent here to protect us will be protecting those who are keeping the covenant. So we have to be in the covenant in order to receive these protections. But look what happens to those who don't get these protections or don't correct their ways. It says in verse 11, and he read the third book. And it contained the wicked deeds of the people. So these people are the people who will not do right. They're not committing unintentional sins. They're breaking the commandment intentionally. They're doing things opposite of what the scripture is telling them to do. And it's not by accident. And these people are also given the chance to correct. 
however they want because they are wicked to the core. But they are have been given the same 10 years. And look what happens to them after those 10 years are up. It says, and the Lord said to Satan, these are your share. Take them and do what you want with them. And Satan took the wicked to the wasteland to destroy them there. So this is what happens after the 10 days of are all up. We start to face these catastrophic events of the earth. And those who are found in the first book will be spared. Those who correct their ways from the second book will also be spared. But the rest, those who will continue to do wickedly, will be turned over to Satan. And all of those people you hear about that's going to die during the apocalypse, those are who's been talked about here. Matter of fact, let me bring you over here to the Third Testament of the Bible to show you this same story being talked about in a different way. The same three groups of people are being talked about in chapter 53 of the Third Testament. This is called the Time of Judgment Has Arrived. That's the name of the chapter. Talking about the Time of Judgment. Again, this is the time that we're living in, especially when we consider these 10 days of all. Let's look down here in verse 27. It says, The time of the harvest has come for each spirit, and that is why you behold confusion among men. Yet I tell you truly that amidst that chaos, each person shall reap what they have sown. So this is talking about the period that we're in now. And you notice that the chaos is increasing. This is the time of the harvest that we heard about. Verse 28 says, and what shall become of my children who have always failed before my law, meaning the people who have never kept the law? This right here is those who is referred to as the unintentional sins. They have never really studied the law, and that's why they're making these unintentional sins. It says, truly, to all those who slumber without wishing to analyze, without studying my lessons, the trials shall come like a whirlwind that makes them fall. So these people will get the trials. The ones who are committing the unintentional sins will get these trials with the purpose of steering them towards the law. This is what's going on over these course of these 10 years. And that's why a lot of people are turning towards the law is because of these trials picked specifically for each individual that would coax them towards doing the right thing. Whatever these trials could be, hurricanes or earthquakes, whatever it is, the purpose of these trials is to steer people towards the law. So those are the people committing these unintentional sins. Then you look here, while to those who have obeyed my teachings, now these are the members of the first group, while to those who have obeyed my teachings, it shall come as an encouragement to compliance, like a beautiful prize awarded by God. So these are the people who are doing right. They have been studying the law all of these many years as if it was a dress rehearsal now all of a sudden are going to find themselves in the midst of these catastrophic events and they're going to be the ones who know what to do when is it that the bible tells us that we are supposed to take a bath when is it that we are supposed to rest when is it that we're supposed to work all of these instructions and a lot lot more are included in the scripture and it is those who have studied these that are going to know what to do when these tribulous times come the law itself will be like a prize from our father because we know what to do it'll be like a treasure map we know where to go while the rest of the people will be lost and confused but verse 29 starts talking about the third group it says those not prepared to renew themselves shall know the greatest bitterness so these who he's talking about are not prepared to renew themselves meaning the people who are not going to do right no matter what you say no matter what happens they're still going to do wrongly these will be blasphemous people who really don't have a chance at all because of their blasphemy that unforgivable sin they must be recycled and so they would be included in this group amongst other people people who will not change their lifestyle it says they shall know the greatest bitterness they shall know the greatest bitterness. So you think of the worst events of the apocalypse. 
they will be focused on these certain people here. Now, I know a lot of people want to think these events are random, but there's nothing random about our father, guys. And when we find ourselves in these hurricanes and these tornadoes, it's for a reason. And these people here will be slated for the most bitterest parts of this tribulation. They're going to get it. And then it says, and shall be raised from the earth, meaning they're going to die. You know, this event is going to actually take these people away. That's what Gad the seer was talking about over there when he said they was turned over to Satan. So after receiving this greatest bitterness on earth, then they're going to be removed from the earth, losing thereby a precious opportunity to atone for their faults and reconcile. And this is what this is all about. This 10 days of awe is all about atoning for our faults and reconciling. This is what this 10 years is for. This is why people are going through so much trouble. They're atoning for their faults and reconciling so that when the day of the Lord comes, these people can go on purified into the kingdom of heaven. Whereas these other people... They're going to have to get their purification in the spirit world and be reborn as children of those who survived the tribulation. It's like the days of Noah, where the majority of the people went away and Noah and his sons were left to replenish the earth. Well, it'll be those who survived this apocalypse that will be like Noah and they will be the ones who will replenish the earth. All right. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um... I'll give you a link to this book, Gad the Seer, in the description of this video. It's really important that we understand these 10 days of awe so we don't squander this time that our Father has given us in order to correct ourselves. I mean, there's a reason why you're watching this video, even over here on this channel and even considering keeping the fall feast days. It's no accident, guys. That's that vibrating echo of the trumpet. Those are the trumpets that we read about, that you hear about, that's supposed to regather our people. These trumpets have been going on since 2017. They're going to come to a head there in about 2027, 2028, as we start those events that will help us to transition over into the millennial age, the kingdom age, when there will be no wickedness left here on the planet. It is during these 10 years, these 10 days of awe that our father and individuals are actually deciding who is the just and who is the wicked, who's going to be removed and who's going to stay. So if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But if you would, leave us a comment either way. And shalom.